Hey guys, welcome to another video. My name is Ronald, I'm from 360 Creatives. And in this video, I'm going to talk about 3D models in 3D Vista. Um, right now, you're currently looking at Tabletop. That's a 3D model available uh, by my sponsor, Azo VR. And um, Azo VR created this really cool thing. Um, as you can see, this one over here. Um, you can click on all kinds of photos and move around this this uh, this whole atmosphere but i would like to show you this one in uh, my own version that i created so here it is um, this is uh, with my own content in there i've done a big electric unicycle trip uh, back in the days uh, when i was a little bit younger and i went from Enschede all the way through belgium Paris, Toulouse, Andorra, Barcelona, Valencia, Madrid, to Lisbon on an electric unicycle. And how an electric unicycle looks like? Well, like this, basically. So, um, here you can see it. Here you can see it. It's like this thing and you stand on it. And when you lean forward, you go faster. It goes up to 40 kilometers an hour. Um, and, um, yeah, I've been doing a big trip on this and I thought it was pretty cool to, well, when we're going to talk about this 3D model and 3D Vista, uh, I wanted to make sure that, you know, I'm, I'm using it in a way that I would also use it myself. So, yeah. Um, but that's it. Um, that's just a little bit about myself here. Uh, now let's get back to the template itself. So, now, first of all, when you open up this project, um, you see this little box over here and you don't know what it is exactly. So one of the first things I will be doing is to create a little thumbnail so that you know what is this type of media that you're looking at. And we do that on the top right, there is uh, in the thumbnail, there's this little photo icon. And when you click on it, it will make a little screenshot of your current view and it will use that as a thumbnail. Now let's move over to the next thing. So. What I thought when I started with 3D models in 3D Vista was, okay, cool, we have all these images over here. You know what? We're going to create a lot of image hotspots. So I'll be like, okay, image. And, uh, I'd be getting an image hotspot and I'd be placing it on top of here. And then I thought, well, you know what? I'm just going to create this a little bit bigger and then I'll just move this and make this fit inside here. But hotspots work a little bit different uh, in 3D models. As you can see, they stick around like this and um, that's it. I can change the position of the hotspot so I can say set location and I can click on somewhere else, but it's going to do something more like this. So it's not going to be actually on the 3D model as an image, which I had expected somehow, um, it's doing it a little bit different. So that's something to, to know right away. So the question is then, okay, so how does it work then? Um, so I'll remove this. Uh, and how it works is instead of in the hotspot tab, you need to be in the objects tab. So right over here. Um, and over here, we can look for the photos that are in there. So. I know that photo one is all the way over here and here it is photo one. So I can hide it if I want to. I can also uh, select multiple objects over here and hide them simultaneously like so. Um, also, just so you know, I can also add a tag to multiple selected objects right away. Like a test, I hit enter. And now all of those things have this tag. Um, I'm going to undo this. I'm going to remove the tag and I'm going to show them all. Now, when I'm in photo uh, one, um, I somehow had hoped maybe for this feature that I could just uh, have a replace option and say, okay, replace object with a different image. Now, unfortunately, that's not the case. So um, and that works a little bit different. So within the project, uh, I get into the project files, 3D, and then over here, I have all these uh, images uh, together with the uh, GLTF and BIM files. Um, also the textures that can be replaced. And what we're looking for is now photo one, this one. 
and to replace it. So the way to replace this is you go open with uh, Affinity Photo or whatever your image editing software is. And then I can just drag and drop any other image on top of here. Hit save, save flattened, that's it. And because we're replacing the file, uh, photo one, that previously was uh, this one over here. So you can see these are still the, uh, from the template and this is my own picture. So uh, what we now need to do is into 3D Vista, we need to file, clear project cache. Now to know, to see that this actually has changed, you need to uh, open up some different tab than 3D. Open 3D again, and then over here, back to the objects. We can see that now the image has been replaced. So that's how you replace an image. Um, now, something else that you might wanna do is that when you see an image like over here, this one, photo 19, um, it's behind the laptop, and so um, I would maybe want to move this image over to here. There's multiple ways of doing it. So Azo VR recommended me to look at the gltfeditor.com, and over here I can go to the files. So I can just uh, select all the files, drag and drop them inside the gltf editor. Zoom in a little bit. Uh, I know that this image is image 19, so when I go over here, uh, you see I got it selected now. So I go to the node, here I say 1, and then this point 2. All right, I like this. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to say File, Save, Format GLTF. I just tend to uh, check off everything over here. Um, keep this to none because Draco compression doesn't work in 3D Vista. Now, I'm not entirely sure about all the settings. Uh, if you have better suggestions, uh, please let me know in the comments. So, but for now, I'm going to uh, keep it like this. I'm going to hit save. All right, so um, what you need to do now is you need to select the GLTF file and the bin file and actually all the other bin files as well that are generated. Um, I'm not sure if this is really the way to go or if you can just keep this one bin file as it used to be originally. But for now, you select all of those, drag and drop them into the project that you're currently working in, uh, apply to all, replace. Um, and now what you do is inside uh, here, you say file, clear project cache, go to 360 videos back to 3D to reload this, objects, and now when we look over here, you can see photo 19 being on this new location. Uh, and over here it's removed. So that's how you can uh, rotate an image uh, or change the location of an image, add extra images to it, uh, however you see fit. Next up, uh, what we're going to do is we're going to create views. So, um, and understand views a little bit more. Right now we can just click over here and we can see that you go to different views. But I would like to create one myself here. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to go to this photo 90 over here. And we're going to create a new view. So we click over here. Great. It makes a little camera sound and then I scroll all the way down and see if view one is created. So here I say uh, tutorial photo 19. And now um, if I want to trigger this, I can um, go anywhere where I can trigger things. For now I'll just create a, I'll create a button. call it trigger view 19 and on the actions I say add action and then I say 3D model, open 3D model, selecting the 3D model, and then I say on click 
in the main viewer, show view, and I scroll all the way down in the list and there is tutorial photo 19 that we just created. All right, so let's click done and hit preview. And now uh, when we click on trigger view 19, and we'll go over there. So great, we got the, the view set up, we got a trigger to set uh, over there. We got a trigger over here. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to look into sequences. So what is a sequence? A sequence is basically a, a video of the 3D model that you can play at any time, but the camera can be uh, uh, changing to the video point, which makes it an extra epic type of experience. Uh, what you're going through. So let me show you when I click over here on, uh, on the play button uh, you see that uh, it goes from one animation from one point to another and then here it fades and you get into a new uh, shot And then again in another one. So that's what we're going to be creating. For now, I'll just uh, delete the sequence uh, because we're going to create our own right now. We already got this one photo, but in order to make it uh, a moving shot that we just saw, we need to have a, a second uh, view or key point, key frame, if you would uh, like to call it. So maybe a little bit more zoomed out like this. Um, and I'll say, at waypoints, scroll down. And now what I would like to do is uh, go over here, Let's see, over here, create a view, go over here and create another view. I call those tutorial three and four. Now, now we've created four views, which means that we have one from here to here and one from here to here. Now, in order to make those four views uh, a sequence, we need to create a sequence. But before we create uh, the sequence, I'm going to go to the global view settings and I'm going to set the inertia, not on quad in out, but on linear so that the default settings will always be linear. It makes it a little easier to work with. So this is set. And now I'm going to create a sequence. I scroll down and here I select the four spots or views. Now, when you click on one of them, uh, you can already see that inertia is set to linear because we just defined the global view setting. So that helps us a lot. Um, now, when you're looking at this, it's a little unclear what all these things mean. And the logic here is that with the very first sequence, you do not want to have a duration of three seconds, but you want this to be zero seconds meaning that when you like when it starts and going to tutorial photo 19. Now, when you want to go from tutorial photo 19 to tutorial photo 19 zoomed out, then the amount of seconds matter. So in this case, to, to take the route from here to here takes three seconds. I'm going to change this to six seconds or maybe 10 if you like that better. Uh, and um, what I would like to add is a little fade, one second. Over here. Uh, now, because from this, so what we're doing now is we go from A to B and from C to D. But between B and C, I just want it to be right away when it's black, I want it to be at the new point. So for that reason, at tutorial three, we're going to set the duration from three seconds to zero seconds. I'll be adding some fades. And in tutorial four, I'll set the duration as well to six seconds. 
and add a fade from as well. Now let's preview this. Instead of doing this button, we're going to just play it over here. So click. All right. And there we go. Now you can even add an action to play some audio when the sequence starts. So right over here, you say then add action to this uh, view. Um, and this way you can add a voiceover or something like that to make it a little bit more cinematic, a, bit, a little bit more epic, so that it feels like, wow, cool, right? So, but that is pretty straightforward, I think. So we've covered now uh, a few things in 3D. Uh, the hotspots versus objects, and we've talked about views, and we've talked about sequences. And the only last thing here uh, to talk about is the lights. So within the lights, in this uh, 3D model, um, ASO VR has told me that they are not using big textures. So if you would do that, you would see that it looks like this, and it looks very boring. Um, and so the textures here uh, are PVR textures, um, and that's a, a sort of 3D effect that you can put on top of uh, the hole. So right now, when I uh, go around, I don't see any reflections or anything like that, right? Because that's how it is with big textures. Now, like this, you see that there's little reflection on the table and uh, that makes it look more real. So that's kind of the effect here. Um, and so other than that, other than the textures, we have three lights in here. Uh, so we got one orbit light and two ambient no one ambient light and two orbit lights. Uh, if you want to make it a little bit more warm, you can change the slider, uh, make it a little more cold, and so on. You can play around with the light settings. Now, if you don't like that, now if you, you would really want to have the colors of the pictures as they were shot. So you can add a little bit more of this to make the color make more real. Um, so yeah, that's about it. Uh, I hope you've uh, learned a few things in this tutorial. If so, please give this uh, video a thumbs up. Um, if you like the product, the link is in the description to buy Tabletop. I would like to give an extra shout out to Azo VR for sponsoring this video. For everyone watching, uh, see you in the next video. Have a great day. All right, bye-bye.